So it is week seven, and we have been going over research. So um, I actually have been doing a little bit of research, and it was just kind of perfect for what I want to make tonight. Um, so I have a lot of cravings. Um, I've got some hormone issues, so kind of always blamed it on that. But some of my cravings are kind of weird, and I thought um, that maybe it was due to like deficiencies or just like my body telling me that I was wanting something that I was lacking. And, um, so I'm like, I wonder how true that is. Cause I feel like that's a kind of a common assumption, like, especially like, oh, I'm craving meat. I mean, I need iron. That one's kind of common. Um, so I always crave nutritional yeast. Um, and I found out a while ago that, um, it has a lot of B12 in it. And so I have M2 Jafar and my B12 levels are kind of hard to maintain. Um, I am on supplements, but I kind of just assume that that's why I've always craved it. And so I took the time this week to see if that was true or not, that um, if they do any, have any research that shows that we actually have deficiencies and so we crave it. Um, and it turns out there's really no evidence that says that this is true. Um, it's more to do with like, um, having low energy and so you crave like sugary foods that are like a really quick source of energy for the body. Um, and then some of the other stuff that I read about food cravings was that it affects the same parts of the brain, like the hippocampus, um, as like having a drug addiction. So it also has to deal with, um, just memory of the foods that you've eaten. Um, so that was kind of cool. Like one of the suggestions was that if you're fighting food cravings to do different memory activities while you have those cravings to kind of shut down that area of the brain. So you, it might be easier to not cave in to those cravings. So anyways, I will show you what I'm going to make tonight. Um, based on my cravings and just wanting it <laughs> rather than uh, my body actually needing um, the nutrients in it. So anyways, I will show you that right now. Okay, so first off, I am going to um, be making a nutritional yeast dressing. Um, it's actually from um, our first semester ever at NUNIM for this program. Um, it was in a Fundamentals of Nutrition workshop, and I saved the recipe because I was just so in love with it. So um, that is the dressing ingredients and what I'm going to be making. I am going to double it just because I uh, love it so much and like to have um, it for like later or just if I want to eat it all. So um, anyways, I'll as I'm making it in my Cuisinart, I'll show you. But nutritional yeast, a little bit of... A Dijon, apple cider vinegar, tamari, garlic, olive oil, and black pepper. And that is all. Um, super simple, but so delicious. So I'm going to be roasting some uh, cauliflower, actually, in the uh, oven. And then I'll toss the sauce in that, and it's super delicious. And just as a, like, a side, that's kind of like what my main recipe is. But um, I am making dinner, so I'm going to be grilling some... Uh, broccolini and then also some chicken just it uh, smells so good outside all the neighbors are grilling so I am going to grill as well so I'll go ahead and get started I got to cut up this cauliflower and get it in the oven so this is my little patio and my grill um, I've had my grill on for a couple minutes just to um, burn off the leftovers from last grill um, so now I'm just going to put my chicken thighs on there. I just did a dry rub, um, so I tossed them in avocado oil and then paprika, salt, pepper, onion, and garlic powder, and then um, some oregano too. So yeah, it's a pretty basic recipe, but it, it works. So I will go ahead and put these on the grill, and then I'll show you my uh, dressing. Okay, it is time to make my nutritional yeast dressing. Um, so I already put the garlic in there. I put three cloves, um, so I'm doubling the recipe, so it should be two tablespoons. Um, about two, or I'm sorry, one cup of olive oil. I did a little less, and I'll taste and see if it needs more. I did about three-fourths a cup. And then, um, six tablespoons of water. Um, four tablespoons of tamari. 
um, four or three tablespoons of apple cider vinegar, and then also um, a half a cup of nutritional yeast, Ooh. and then lastly the um, Grey Poupon or the um, Dijon mustard, which might not come out, so I might have to pause it. But anyways, you just combine all those ingredients and you blend and you have your sauce. Pretty simple. Alright, so my chicken thighs are just about done. So now I'm going to put my broccolini. Um, I just tossed it in some avocado oil, some lemon juice, freshly squeezed salt and pepper, and a little red pepper flake, and I'll grill them just super quick on here so they get that nice grill flavor, but not too burnt. So, I use my hands, I know. Ah. This is easier with two hands, usually. These little guys, so, yeah, I will let those, like, just a couple minutes, and then I'll turn them over. But yeah, just a quick little grill on those guys and they're delicious. So, almost done with dinner. Okay, so here are my finished products. Um, this is the roasted cauliflower. Um, I just tossed it in avocado salt, or avocado oil, salt and pepper, and let that roast in the oven um, for only 30 minutes or so. I didn't really keep track, probably should have. And then I tossed my sauce in there and I have a lot left over. And my grilled chicken thighs, and then my delicious broccolini. Um, I put more fresh lemon on it. I don't know why. I just find it like super refreshing and just just a yummy veggie. So um, I'll go ahead and plate this and try it all, and then discuss like what I change and what I like and all that good stuff. Hey, so I um, just sampled all of the things I made: the grilled chicken, broccolini, and the. Um, cauliflower in that nutritional yeast dressing and it totally um, was just perfect for my food craving. It was super delicious. So that sauce, I wouldn't change anything about. I think it's perfect. Um, I would put it on my food all the time, <laughs> um, but I'm, you know, moderation. There's a fair amount of olive oil in that and very salty too, so not something I would have every day, but very, very good. And, um, yeah, I, I think I would have probably roasted my cauliflower a little more. Um, I like it a little more crispier, but otherwise I think it was a very successful dinner. Um, I'm just kind of bringing it back to the lecture for this week. Um, you know, this nutritional yeast and if it's a craving or if it's something that I really wish, like my, my body just wants it because of a deficiency. I mean, based on what I research I did, it seems to be that um, it's definitely just a cream, like a more of a mental or psychological thing versus like my a biochemical thing. Um, but it's just interesting kind of like what the PowerPoints were saying, just um, the, R, the randomized controlled studies, that's kind of what I was looking at as far as the cravings. And you know, that's not the perfect way to uh, analyze food. Um, there's a lot of flaws with that. I mean, food, like nutrition is so complex and can't just be simplified by looking at one variable and um, breaking, again, like the reductionism and looking at nutrients and testing those and basing studies off of that. And then we make dietary decisions off of all of this. <clears throat> so it's hard. I mean, I'm about to have a degree in this subject and I will do research on something and sometimes I don't know what to think. So, um... I think it's just really great that we got a review and that um, we just kind of have to be on our toes and be critical thinkers when we're reading this kind of research. So uh, anyways, that is the end of week seven and I look forward to week eight um, and cooking something else. So see you then.